Thank you, thank you, Svetlana Anatolievna. It's a great pity that uh, we sit uh, separately at our offices uh, and you are in your studio, but this is um, the current time. We have to keep up with this. However, we have this virtual connection and it may impact the presentation time. You have uh, a complicated time uh, task, task to moderate uh, our virtual presentations. I'm the first speaker. Therefore, I'll try to stay within my time limit, whatever it takes me. The changes. So I came with this uh, theme to explore in our agenda. And in fact, this is just the title. The content may be somewhat different. Biomarkers, new biomarkers have emerged. I believe uh, it has a bright future, this topic. It's a big uh, observational study that was started, started in 2015. So we've <coughs> had uh, five years of observation uh, following these patients. The patients um, were followed. In fact, uh, we examined their um, genes and their combinations, 31 genes. To the left, you see gene names, um, the, the, its function, um, regulation class, expression, or um, suppression of the expression. Here is the next slide. To the left, uh, table one demonstrates certain demography of, our pa of the patients. Let us focus uh, on the AGCC stage. 48% um, in the first stage, um, 22 in the second, and 30% uh, in the third stage. The bottom line, these are gene signature of uh, class two. The right side, at the top, we see uh, four subgroups. And do not confuse them with the stages. These are not stages. These are subgroups, as I said. To, to the left in the table, you see cl class 2, 43%, as we said. Um, we separated it out. And uh, consider carefully table 2. Here. We see all these uh, familiar characteristics uh, of uh, tumors, breast slow thickness, uh, mitotic rate, uh, ulceration, um, lymphatic nodes uh, with lesions. So let us look uh, at the breast slow thickness parameter. And we know that's the most strong prognostic factor for local tumors. And let us build a model of uh, equal possibilities or probabilities, whether it will be a metastatic disease or not. So the index per ser will just add 20% to the probability. The amitotic index just adds uh, 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.1, uh, 1.01. Therefore, AGCC version doesn't keep it currently. And how the sum will change if we have a positive node. So you see, you multiply it by the factor of two, uh, this indicator. What's interesting for certain genetic classes, uh, like uh, um, 1b, 2a, 2b, there are three indicators. First, RFS. This is relapse-free survival. And we see that the heart rate ratio is 292, much higher than the breath low sickness and uh, all other indicators. Let us move uh, right along the table. And we have this distant metastasis-free survival. See, uh, we've reached 2.92 indicator, it keeps uh, more or less the same. And when we come to the specific uh, uh, melanoma specific survival, see, 
we see that a gene signature plays a great role. What are the conclusions? So all patients uh, with the uh, um, first to third uh, local stage, well, metastatic st stage has already started after the first one, uh, gene signature divide them into classes, all of them, the first and the second. And then we may build our follow-up concept and examination for the patients. The CCM group, as you know, and CCN, develops uh, clinical guidelines. So they have this discussion. Um, when shall we start such examinations in our patients? Everybody confirms that this uh, has some interesting prospects. However, they urge us uh, to have uh, a major additional study to make sure that that's exactly how it will be in reality. So currently, the key pathomorphological um, examination is the key still. But my take on uh, uh, the information I presented, that it has uh, a high potential for tomorrow. Well, probably not today yet, but uh, for tomorrow it has bright prospects. Uh, now, um, ectomy after uh, the biopsy of a centile lymphotic lymphatic node. So we know this biopsy uh, of the um, centile node, if it happens, and we have uh, some uh, tumor elements, we tried in this, we're talking about surgeries now, uh, we um, had it towards uh, um, extensive uh, lymphatic uh, um, dissection. Two studies, however, showed that um, it doesn't have much sense. Uh, MSLT2, one um, examination study in the United States, showed that there was no changes uh, uh, in uh, the survivability, whether distant uh, whether or uh, melanoma, melanoma specific. This is the right curve. And the same showed uh, by the German studies, uh, DECOG, Again, identical outcomes, uh, the total survivability and uh, relapse-free survivability to the left and to the right. Our country started to biopsy uh, the centile um, lymphatic node uh, currently, and there is this uh, view that uh, uh, if the result is positive, that uh, uh, lymphatic dissection is necessary. But the data shows, in my opinion, that it's not mandatory. However, if patients' patients uh, uh, are well informed today, and we believe uh, whether to go ahead with the surgery or not is to be um, decided uh, between the patient and the surgeon. If a surgeon explains everything clearly to the patient, then the patient takes a decision uh, which may be supported by the surgeon. New adjuvant uh, skin melanoma uh, and how to uh, new adjuvant therapy for skin melanoma. I will not cover it because we will. Uh, we have Charles Bolch, my uh, brilliant colleague from Houston. He will cover it. I will not take uh, his uh, um, information away from him and move ahead with my presentation. Um, now be rough neck uh, inhibitors. So we uh, we use uh, member of minotinib and uh, cominotinib and they are part of our clinical standards, treatment standards. But globally, there is another set of encarapirid and vibinafinib. And I know that uh, our country is preparing currently uh, to register to license these drugs. Uh, uh, it may happen next year domestically. But let us co uh, compare the f rate of objective response in these three combinations. You see, uh, the outcome is uh, pretty much uh, the same quite the same. Let us uh, look at the total survivability median. Then you see that encomifirinib uh, um, and biminibitinib, it has uh, more outcomes. But uh, in terms of uh, five-year total survivability, it's more or less the same. So target uh, 
um, products have some side effects, as we know. And um, what is this? Uh, photosensibility, fever, and retinopathy. Let us look at the drug combinations and you see what's happening where. Fever is more present uh, uh, at labratrami, but it uh, can be uh, carby, finifinipa, uh, and uh, iminipinipa, up to 30%, uh, anchor, and uh, bini, uh, at minimum 20%. It's minimal there. However, serosion uh, retinopathy, um, serorethinopathy is higher, um, 30%, 38% at encoprambini, and Colby plus fem, it's 27%. Uh, w plus trum has um, none. And uh, photosensibilization, toxicity is the highest, uh, is with the Colby plus them, etc. All these three pairs, uh, three combinations, have their toxicity profile and their efficiency, as we said, more or less similar. And once we've got this third combination, I think in Russia we will use it to the same extent as we used the previous two. Now, triple combination is a theme and topic that was discussed and expected uh, and trilogy inspire the third phase over 500 uh, patients uh, subjects uh, with uh, uh, three com uh, triple combinations uh, uh, and uh, compared to uh, placebo and uh, immune oncological drug the schemes uh, are used in the pro under the protocol are in, on this slide, four weeks uh, were for preparations. Patients received uh, only targets uh, and uh, didn't receive uh, a DESA. Uh, starting day 28, uh, uh, this uh, triple combination started. So the primary and endpoints uh, were survivability without relapse, relapse-free survivability, and uh, the objective response uh, rate. Let us consider these. Uh, the objective response rate initially seems uh, similar, 65 to 66 percent, 17 to 16 percent, and uh, the primary and endpoint uh, survival relapse free survivability was better at uh, um, significantly better at um, the triple combination, and therefore it, the, this combination was licensed. However, when total survivability was studied, we do not see so far this bright, uh, uh, very different uh, um, outcome. So, and uh, once licensed uh, is complete, uh, uh, extra um, follow up with be done, and we will see the mortality rate as well. So, n this year or next year, we expect uh, some more data. Uh, safety profile now. Uh, we believe. Uh, and we expect that triple combination uh, will provide will give more side effects. Yes, indeed, uh, stage uh, three and four by six percent uh, degree three and uh, four uh, by six percent uh, is different uh, from placebo. Uh, uh, we are also interested uh, in the indicator which uh, just uh, to cancel the entire therapy. Tezolizumab uh, has 13% cancellation rate for the therapy. It's the same as for combimetinib co plus uh, vemurafenib uh, in its uh, clear um, setup. Failures. Uh, let us then um, look uh, at combi I study. In its concept, uh, it is the same as the previously discussed. Uh, however, it was uh, IPPD uh, with uh, cyperizumab and uh, um, target uh, Darba and Trame. The objective response rate uh, was similar, a bit higher at the triple combination of uh, uh, Sparta, Dub, and Trump, a uh, full response, uh, total response, complete response uh, was a bit higher. However, the endpoint uh, uh, relapse-free was somewhat similar, so uh, statistically insignificant. 
So, and therefore, this study overall was assessed negatively. The uh, total survivability uh, at the median observation uh, was about 30 months, uh, and there was not uh, a great difference. Samurai, my uh, last theme, it's metastasic uh, lesion of uh, um, um, cervical. Mm. We see that um, there is uh, some limit uh, in uh, uh, numbers, uh, but uh, it has five uh, years of availability, three cohorts. Cohort A and B, with no big difference. That's asymptomatic metastasis without the previous radiotherapy. In the first case, we've used the combination of um, Niva and Ibi drugs. In the second case, only Niva. And in the cohort C, with a very adverse uh, forecast, there was only NIVA. So we see the following. We see that the endocranial response rate uh, is a um, very good result. It's 51%. And uh, that differs a lot uh, from the 20% in the second cohort, where NIVA only was um, used. I will not even compare it with the C cohort. Well, the extra cranial ones, these patients, besides the brain metastasis, frequently have other metastases as well, the extra cranial ones. And there, the um, objective response uh, rate is uh, even higher. Um, and the five-year survival, take a look at the data, uh, with no progression on intracranial foci. Uh, NIVA plus EP gives 46% of a five-year survival without any progression. Uh, now the overall survival, NIVA plus EP uh, gives 51% of overall survival. Let's uh, agree that these figures are to be admitted as outstanding ones. And uh, the patients with metastasis in brain plus or minus uh, estocranial metastasis may be reliably protected with combination of NIVA EP. And this reliability is for a period of five years or perhaps more most likely. That is why, uh, before I say goodbye and say thanks for the attention, I will say that the main conclusion is uh, as follows. Uh, well, uh, we keep going upward. Uh, first, the new combinations, new options of treatment um, keep going up. Now the process is going in a slightly different way. We have come to the required altitude of flight, and the flight is um, going on in normal conditions. Thanks for the attention. Um,